Welcome to Nineworks TV. Now I'm born in the late 1980s, which means I'm one of 1.8 billion millennials on planet Earth. So the question is, as a millennial, should you buy a car older than you? Should you buy a classic Porsche? We're gonna study the pros and cons of that very question. proper door sound. So, an actual key, first of all, not a fob, with an immobiliser. The finest of 80s technology. So, that should now turn. And we're off. The first thing to make clear is, even if you're not a millennial, stay tuned, because I'm sure there are things that we can all learn from this video. But, Let's face the facts first of all. As I say, 1.8 billion people on planet Earth are millennials like me. That's nearly 25% of the Earth's population. But, I mean, beyond that and Generation Z and all the rest of it, those guys and girls aren't really buying classic cars. People my age didn't grow up with a 964 on the bedroom wall, so why getting older would we want one? I mean, take my own case in point. When I grew up, there wasn't a picture of a Porsche 911 on my bedroom wall. What I did have though, was a PlayStation game, Need for Speed Porsche 2000, full of 996s. And so therefore, from my own personal experience, there's a bit of a poetic harmony that 30 years on or whatever it is, I'm now driving the car that I used to drive on the PlayStation, on a computer game. So that's the kind of the paradigm, the shift. And that is what this video is all about, really, is, exploring the pros of buying a car that is older than you and that perhaps you didn't really have a connection with growing up. I've said many a time that there's a Porsche out there for everybody and there really, really is. And do you know what? A classic might not be for you. And if you're thinking, well, we live in this world of instant gratification and uh, ease of use. If you feed into all that lifestyle for a similar money to something like this, you can go out and buy a 991.2 GTS and have some money left over in the bank. It'll be fast, it'll be easy with PDK and four wheel drive and all the rest of it. Well look, just before you do that, and that might be the right decision for you, before you do that, consider the merits of a classic car because it may well appeal to you. The facts are we live in a world where cars are faster than ever and so you're doing the maximum speed in the blink of an eye. A 991 or 992 Turbo S, for example, put your foot down, two seconds later, you're breaking the law. Is there really fun in that? I think we might struggle with a microphone here, but we'll see. But I mean, classic Porsches aren't slow. Bring the speed down so you can hear me. But as demonstrated there, they're not slow, they're not lightning fast, don't get me wrong, but there's more fun and engagement and involvement, I think. So holding onto the revs as I did there, seeing that needle swing round the tachometer and chase the red line before changing up. So the point is, in my argument, you're far more likely to get more out of your drive in a classic car than you ever will in a point and squirt modern car. In a classic car, you can feel that speed more, the sense of occasion that it brings, and you can have all of that fun while staying on the right side of the law. And again, if you want high reward for your investment, you can't beat the sight, the sound, the smell, the feel of a classic car. It's something that a tech-laden modern car won't give you, and in fact robs you of with all that technology. It does a lot of things for you. Of course, the counter argument is, well, these classic cars, they're very high on the maintenance. And a car that's been poorly looked after throughout its life, yes, it is going to be quite prep or maintenance hungry. But if the car has been kept well on top of in terms of its maintenance, 
should be absolutely hassle-free driving. And that's because Porsche's entire 75-year reputation has been built on the reliability of its engineering time after time after time. Therefore, there is no reason why you cannot jump in a classic car, turn the key and go off for a morning of driving just as you would in a modern one. I also think driving a classic car increases your skill set as a driver. It gives you a degree of mechanical empathy that a digital tech-laden modern car won't give you, for example, even just down to the gearbox. I mean, these late 3.2 Carreras, all speedsters have the G50 gearbox, but all late 3.2 Carreras uh, from that era, so 1986 onwards, they have the G50 gearbox rather than the 915 gearbox, and they are easy to get along with. But even if you're at the wheel of an SC and you've got a tired 915 gearbox, there's a way you shift, particularly when cold, when the oil's cold, that just, yeah, it comes down to that mechanical empathy that you need to nurse the car until it's warm. And uh, to me, that's just all part of the charm. Then we can come on to things like heel and toe shifting, double D clutching. And I bet there's 50% of millennials watching this video have never even heard of what double D clutching is, let alone know what it means. So again, it increases your skill set as a driver to have that mechanical empathy for the car you are driving. To my mind, that increases your bond or connection to the car. And that, again, furthers your enjoyment. It's nice to just stop for the minute and take in this stunning Speedster. It's a very different silhouette to any other Porsche 911, but the Speedster is a Porsche icon. As we know, started with a 356. It's a model line that's carried right the way through to the present day with the 991 Speedster. All of these are high value collector's cars. All of them are extremely rare and it is a pleasure to be able to pedal this car today supplied by Paragon Porsche. It's worth checking this out on the Nine Works Marketplace and on Paragon GB's website. But when we're not throffing at the mouth of this stunning hand-built classic Porsche from the 1980s, we have to stop and be sensible for a minute. So everything we've spoken about so far in terms of the argument for a classic car, well, it's all quite anecdotal and also quite idyllic. It's a lot of cash, it's a lot of cash that's tied up. So how risky is that investment? Well, the stratospheric rise of values of air-cooled Porsches in particular over the last 10 to 15 years is well documented. You only have to go back 10 years to 2012, you could pick up a 964 Carrera 2 for about 15 grand. Now you're knocking on six figures for a low mileage C2 manual non-sunroof car. Anyway, to repeat, values of classic Porsche across the board over the last 10 years has risen substantially. And here's the interesting bit, over the last two years, so this is since the pandemic, average values of classic Porsches has still appreciated by about 20%. Marry that to the fact that over the last two years or that same period, the number of EVs, electric vehicles on our roads and alternative fueled vehicles has risen exponentially, okay? It kind of sideswipes the argument that the more we progress down the line of e-mobility, the more redundant or superfluous or archaic classic cars become. The stats are telling us it's quite the opposite in fact. And you could argue that the more we go down that road of e-mobility, the more attractive a proposition a classic car like this is to the enthusiasts like you and I. Let's be honest, there are plenty of us. That's the financial side of things when it comes to classic sports car ownership. It's looking good so far, isn't it? It's all stacking up. Let's climb back behind the wheel, keep bonding with the car and see what else classic car ownership has to offer. What amazes me about these things, and you think of a classic car, well, they're not gonna be made with the same tolerances or degree of precision as the modern stuff. But I mean, I am stunned by the build quality of this car. Again, this car predates my own existence on planet Earth, and it's arguably in a better condition. But I mean, not only is the build quality of a classic Porsche pretty exceptional anyway, they're all handmade as well. And I mean, oh, it's just so cool, particularly in this day and age. And it definitely increases its appeal. By virtue of the fact these classics are hand-built means they are significantly rarer than modern machinery too. And in a world where we all like to be a little bit different these days, there's much appeal to owning a car that carries with it a degree of exclusivity. Another advantage with these classics is, I mean, they're so simple, aren't they? They're so simple mechanically 
compared to the modern stuff, which is just littered with sensors. And the advantages of that are twofold. The first thing is, well, there's less to go wrong. And the second thing is, well, technically, they should be easier to put right because there are less things to worry about on them. If you're more technologically minded than I am, and that's probably most people on planet Earth, it's a chance for you to roll up your sleeves and give things a go yourself. Another positive to owning a classic car. The big counter argument is, well, you're not gonna use a classic 911 every day. The reality is a classic Porsche can be used every day because, well, most of them were back in the day. And what's changed? Well, nothing, because again, if it's properly maintained, well, it shouldn't be an issue to drive. It shouldn't want for anything, whether it's 1985 or 2025. I mean, let's put some context into this. So we've been kind of led or forced, you might argue, down this road of e-mobility. And certainly I think before long, we're all going to be driving alternatively fueled vehicles at the very least, if not fully electric cars, which is bad news for any vehicle of any vintage with a combustion engine, whether it's a 1970s, 80s, 90s classic or a car from the 2010s, it's all faced with the same problem. So if we're going down the route where, and in my opinion, this will happen, owning a combustion engine vehicle going forward is gonna be a bit like owning a horse, not used for your day-to-day -day travel, but something to indulge in as a hobby on the weekend. And so if that's to be the case, you may as well indulge in a low production, hand-built, simple sports car that's low on maintenance and yet high on emotional reward. If there's eventual financial reward added into the mix, then even better, but it shouldn't be your main driver of intent as you'll be missing the point of what really makes these cars so special. And that for me is the crucial bit and a really nice bonus, particularly if, like me, you're a Porsche fanatic. And that's because when you buy a classic, you don't just own a classic car, you own a piece of history. So look, there we go. That's the roundup of why I think as a millennial, buying a car that's older than you, predates your own existence on planet Earth, is an extremely attractive proposition and one that shouldn't be ruled out straight away. As I say, there's a Porsche out there for everybody and after considering all of the arguments uh, just stated, it still might not be for you. And do you know what? That's absolutely fine. As I said at the top of the video, what I do encourage you to do is to just consider it. Because the idea of owning a classic Porsche has so much going for it. Thanks to Mark and the guys at Paragon Porsche for lending me such an exquisite classic 911, an absolutely stunning example of a 911 Speedster. Thank you to you for watching, of course. And the last thing to say is don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications. It means every time I drop a video, you get to see it first. See you again soon, perhaps in a classic Porsche 911.